So I'm here with Mike Nolan. Mike, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. Uh, you know, as well as can be expected under these uh, crazy life we're living in right now. Oh, good. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, so I know you're going to walk us through some paintings that I believe, are you working on these now since you've been in quarantine or are these ones that you had been worked on prior to everything that's happening? These are all uh, prior to everything that's happening, except for the uh, one of the shell, the cathedral and the Texas star I finished during quarantine. Okay, well, why don't we just jump right in and why don't you just walk us through uh, the paintings? Well, the first painting uh, that we could talk about is one, um, a painting that I worked on for a few years called A Map of the World, which was, which is actually a tree that is covered with objects that I actually happened to be visiting my parents in Oklahoma. And I just happened to drive by this woman's front yard and sh this tree was actually in her yard. Of course, I've taken a lot of liberties with the objects I put on the tree and how I changed them, but um, I still need to make a print. I promised her I would make a print and bring it to her at some point because she really couldn't understand why I was interested in the tree. And she, second of all, couldn't understand that somebody would make a painting of a of her tree covered with, you know, tchotchkes, basically, you know. Were these tchotchkes that she put on herself? Yes, yes, they were. It was some sort of personal. Uh, in in outsider and self taught, there's a term called yard show that you see in the South a lot, and it's where people make decorations in their yard. Like maybe they paint, uh, uh, you know, the bricks a certain color, or maybe they put statues out there, or maybe, in this case, she had everything from kitchen trivets to stuffed animals to uh, uh, signs saying, I love Jesus, to just, just anything you can think of. Um, you know, there was probably at least 50 objects on the tree, and if you look at the painting, you can see that I sort of tried to stay uh, honest to her vision, but I, you know, obviously I took liberties and added some things and changed some things to make it more interesting visually. But it was really inspired by this woman's yard piece. And this was in Oklahoma? Yes, in Duncan, Oklahoma. Now, did you say that she was wondering, she was surprised that you were interested in it? Yes, she was, she was surprised. My brother and I were just driving by and I, when I'm down there, I oftentimes, I'm, you know, actually all the time, I'm always looking to take pictures of images that may uh, be of use to me in the studio at some point. And when I saw this tree in the yard, I, I immediately knew I, it interested me. I wasn't sure I was going to do a painting of it at the time, but, you know, eventually I did. That's a bit surprising that she was surprised at you being interested because I would think that that would be part of why she's decorating a tree in her yard would be to yeah. share something that she thinks is interesting with the world. Well, that's, I agree with you, but I think what happens, I mean, I've had this happen where people, I've taken pictures of other trees down in that part of the country where people have put in, you know, place skulls on the tree or, uh, other objects, and I, I don't know that they necessarily, I'm not sure what kind of dialogue they want to have with the viewer, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure what she hoped to have happen, but she certainly didn't seem to be prepared for me to stop, and, you know, and then when she came out and saw me taking the pictures, I explained to her that I was an artist, and that I really liked her, her art, her, her piece of artwork, you know. Yeah, uh, okay. That she had made, and uh, I, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe, maybe she made it for her own personal satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And, and I got a feeling that her neighbors never appreciated it, you know, like they maybe saw it as junk on a tree, you know, like maybe yeah. they didn't see it as a beautiful object like I did. So yeah. it may be that most of the response she'd gotten up to that point was, you know, fairly negative from her neighbors, you know, or, or that looks like crap, you know, to have a tree covered with objects. And I, I don't know, it's hard to say. I, I, I didn't 
I don't know any more about it than that, really. Okay, good. Well, thanks for walking us through that one. Okay. Uh, we could start next with War Dog. Uh, okay. War Dog was done in the last, it, it took me a while to paint it, but it was sort of, I, I was reading a lot about uh, men and women coming back from the Middle East from the war, the, the different, all the different wars over there with terrible head injuries, like okay. from IEDs, they would come back and have severe brain damage or, uh, you know, their skulls would be uh, fractured. And so in the painting War Dog, the dog has 10 ears that I, that are, that was my way of sort of showing that his ears had been damaged and replaced sort of a, almost like, um, I guess, like a, a, a prosthetics, I guess. Okay. And I don't know how it, you know, it, it's one of those strange things. I, I, I don't know how the painting came to be because sometimes it's kind of a mysterious journey. But eventually I realized that I was thinking, I was trying to make something that reflected uh, my respect for these uh, soldiers that were coming back. And also maybe to be critical of, of the war at the same time, you know? Okay. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, so it's a very powerful painting. It's very uh, strange in some ways because the dog is green. Uh, which it, that's not a common, I don't, you know, it, it, it was many colors before it was green and I couldn't tell you why it ended up green, but it works the way it is now. Yeah, I definitely would say that the dogs, I don't know if it's the eyes or if it's the proportions of the face, but it has a very human look about it. Yeah, I, I would hope that it becomes in some ways anthropomorphic, you know, and, uh, you know, as I said, it, 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 it's sort of a, it became sort of like a symbol to me of, 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 of people that were coming back probably with uh, all kinds of horrible experiences and uh, things they were trying to, you know, deal with and uh, uh, in their own personal lives and maybe rehabilitation and stuff like that, you know. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, which one should we talk about next? Uh, uh, whatever the, you want. The Prophet of Wisdom is was done at the same time as War Dog. It's an image of an owl. And I uh, wasn't, I, I, I painted, I've painted owls a lot over the years, but this owl in particular has a fierceness to it. Um, and it has something to do, I think it, the painting had something to do with what we're dealing with in this country right now with half of the population uh, being, uh, you know, halfway intelligent and the other half sort of not being so intelligent or uh, it may be a, may have been my way of dealing with the, the Donald Trump situation is what I'm trying to get to. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it, there's something about a fierceness in the owl that uh, has something to do with this idea of knowledge and wisdom that uh, I think is very valuable and I really respect. And I'm really appalled when, uh, you know, I read on the internet or see people, you know, in our current situation without a face mask or, uh, you know, doing things that we would all think is not for our all, all our best in, uh, benefit, in other words. Sure. Um, so, I, and also, I, I also think it was my way of dealing, dealing with my shock that Trump was elected. I totally didn't expect it. I never thought that he would be elected. And it sort of, uh, you know, brought home to a lot of us how divided this country was, which I think we didn't really know. Maybe we had hints about it, but I don't think we really knew how bad the division was until you know, and we're still dealing dealing with it today, mm -hmm. with this coronavirus and uh, his leadership is there is no leadership in our country right now. Uh, the only thing I've been able to tell my kids and uh, friends is to just trust the science. You know, trust the scientists. I go to the CDC website every day, but if you listen to our leaders, you know, at one point when 
uh, I was on a trip to Oklahoma. Uh, they were saying that it was no worse than the flu on, on March the 13th, the day I left. And by the time I got back on March the 16th, they were saying that it was, uh, that we maybe needed to uh, use hand sanitizer. And, you know, and, and since then, of course, that's several weeks ago. Yeah. Now uh, we know that we probably should have been wearing masks all along. We probably should have, uh, we know that the government knew about all of this way before we were told about it, uh, or they had warnings about it, I think is what I've read, uh, that what was going on in China, I mean, or in other parts of the world. And it seemed like to me we were sort of slow to uh, react. And so the painting really was, is sort of about, um, it's sort of about my reaction to Donald Trump being elected when I didn't think he would be elected, which was a surprise to a lot of us, I think. Um, but for me personally, it, the, that painting, uh, the wisdom painting, also has a fierceness to it. The owl is sort of uh, very serious. And at least that's what I think it's about, is about... Uh, uh, acknowledging that wisdom is an important uh, thing in my, in my life and, and I would hope in other people's lives too, you know? Right, yep. Okay, good, thank um, you. And so should we talk about cathedral next? Sure, that sounds great. Uh, well, we could refer to it as the seashell painting um, since it's the only seashell painting in our, our group today. Um, what happened with that was my son gave me a a fossil for Christmas a few years ago. Uh, and, and I was fascinated by it. And I've had it in my studio for a couple of years now. And I started on that painting a few years ago and just kept changing it and changing it. And throughout the process, I realized that I wanted it to become um, just sort of like a Zen type painting. You know, like where when you look at this, this painting in person, I think. Uh, just like uh, mantras and uh, things like that, you know, like there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of ways people can interpret this painting, you know, depending on what their frame of mind is. And that's one thing that I really like about it. Um, like I said, I struggled with it for quite a while. Um, to me, the title Cathedral comes from the, uh, the, uh, Raymond Carver a short story called Cathedral, which is, he's one of my favorite authors and that's what came to me as a title. So that's that on about that painting. Okay. And the last painting is one called Texas Star. And it, it started out as a sunflower and it sort of morphed into this strange flower like I've never seen before, which often happens with my work, but I, I really like the color in it and I like the way it glows and uh, which is a part of what happens in a lot of my paintings. But I found my, the, the, uh, the last two paintings we're talking about, the uh, cathedral and the Texas star are the ones that I finished after the pandemic started. So they sort of changed, they, they may have been different. I'm not sure, I mean, who could know that? But I do know that that there was a lot of anxiety in my own personal life or in my own personal space, or even out here in the studio, worrying about, you know, loved ones, worrying about what's going on in the world. And those two paintings are, to me, are very calm and sort of reassuring. And I think for me, they were a way of dealing with this anxiety uh, and f making a, a statement about, uh, of hope, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I see both of those paintings as being very hopeful and I hope optimistic. So they were sort of my way of calming myself down and uh, reassuring myself that we'll get through this. Did it so, work? Yes, I, I, I actually find that paintings do that anyway, uh, for the most part. The process of painting for me is, you know, I did a series of paintings about 20 years ago called Leaps of Faith. And they were of all these different fish images of fish jumping out of the water. But I was thinking about at the time, like 
as an artist, being an artist is a leap of faith. You, you know, you, you, you're hoping that people will like what you make. It's a leap of faith that you'll make great paintings, a leap of faith that people may actually like them, uh, a leap of faith that they mean something to somebody. Um, so I think that these, with this pandemic going on, I found myself thinking about that art, making art is always a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. So for artists, I don't know that um, we're, you know, we're used to working in isolation for the most part, but I do think that uh, we were talking earlier and I don't remember at which point about how I've seen two different reactions to this pandemic. I've seen people that have totally stopped working. Uh, and, you know, I, I do know that a lot you mean of people artists. are drinking more. You're, you're talking about artists, art yes. I'm talking about painters or my friends that I've talked okay. to. There's either they have the reaction of that they just are paralyzed by fear and anxiety and they're not making anything, or they're kicked into high gear and they're working like a mad man or woman, you know? So I think that's the two reactions I've seen. And for me, there was a period where I would say there was probably a month where I didn't feel like painting at all. I just couldn't believe what was going on. I mean, I, I felt like what's the sort of, I, I felt a little bit down about what was going on, but then, you know, I started painting again. And then once I started painting again, I started feeling better. Um, which is the way we artists deal with our emotions and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, it, it helps us. So, so it, it has been very helpful to work on these new paintings. Um, I think as time goes on, we're learning more about what uh, this pandemic, more facts about it mm -hmm. almost daily. So I find myself still anxious about it, especially for my elder uh, stepmother and people, my brother who has uh, health issues already, you know. So, but for my own personal thing, I, I think I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, I feel really blessed and, you know, I feel like artists are some of the luckiest people in the world because we have a way to deal with these emotions and create and turn it into a positive thing instead of just sitting around drinking or, you know, other things that people may be doing. Yeah, I uh, would agree. I would agree. So, so I think, uh, I don't know, did we talk about how I, uh, our thoughts about moving forward with the galleries? Was that, did that get into the last video? It didn't. So just people watching this, we, uh, we had a technical glitch and we had a big part of this conversation that, uh, didn't get recorded. So we did, uh, that was not captured. Okay, well, uh, let's, we can... let's sort of touch on that a little bit, because I, I've been talking with um, different galleries, and, you know, a lot of people are artists and de art dealers are anxious to see how we'll proceed uh, forward. It seems like we will show work di digitally, uh, and then maybe people will make appointments and come to the galleries in small groups or one-on-one -on -one and look at the work in person. But um, what I was saying earlier is that what I'm really worried about is just like a lot of my favorite restaurants, I'm also afraid that a lot, that they won't survive uh, because of the economy. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that some brick and mortar galleries will no longer exist after this. I'm sure there will be many that won't, won't, won't survive this if it, if it lasts a long time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how they can survive. Yeah, I, so, I think, yeah, I think that there's been a lot, particularly in Chicago, that um, went out of business in the past year, and that was during a booming economy. Yeah, I, I think we've seen the, uh, uh, especially in Chicago, we've seen the galleries closing, uh, some of its dealers getting older, retiring, some of its because of the economy, you know, I don't know what all the different reasons are, but I mean, it's frustrating for me because I recently uh, have had a really great experience showing with Teresa Hoffheimer at the Hoffheimer Gallery. And I talked to her last week and we're hopeful that we will be able to get 
past these next few months and she's showing a lot of great artists and it would just be a shame if if that outlet i mean chicago really needs a gallery like that right now i feel like and i feel like she's filled a, a void that chicago has needed for a while and in the last 20 years or so i mean in the 80s there was this real sense of camaraderie in chicago at the galleries and you would go to galleries and you would see a lot of artists and you would have you know you would have talks you would have some drinks you would get into arguments you would uh be happy be angry you know all kinds of things i mean it was exciting and i haven't seen as many artists come to openings as, as i have recently at the Hofheimer Gallery. So that's given me personally a lot of pleasure and a lot of hope, you know, about the gallery scene in Chicago. And then we get this pandemic that could wipe out this, what to me seemed a very hopeful situation, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm hoping that it doesn't, but I'm just saying like, the reality is I don't know how long it will be or how long a, any of these galleries will survive without business. Yeah, it's obviously a, a lot of unknowns. A lot of unknowns, that's for sure. And so, you know, we, the, the answer is that artists keep making work and keep working. And I think that's the best for our mental health anyway. Um, I think, I, I'm hope, I know that the ga gallery, that the art world will survive somehow. People need art in their lives. Uh, people want to live with art. And I think there will be a way we will figure out, we'll be creative and figure out a way to work with this, uh, is my opinion. I'm hopeful that yeah. we will, you yeah. know. Yeah, and, for certain. And it may be a different world going forward. Uh, you know, it may be for three years we're wearing face masks, you know, in public. You know, I have no idea. Um, unless they come up with a vaccine, which would be amazing and really helpful. Um, but, I, you know, I'm hopeful about the art world. I'm, I try to remain hopeful about everything, you know, is, is what I try to do, you know? Right. Uh, I mean, I, I know you do too. I mean, that seems to be your personality. And also by doing these podcasts and things that you do, I think that it's probably helping people communicate in a time when it's very hard to sort of communicate uh, well, face to face, it's almost impossible now. Yeah. But I feel like this is a very good thing that we're doing uh, today. And I, I know you're doing it with other people and I, I'm sure it'll be very, uh, it'll probably be educational for some collectors that maybe don't understand how artists work or, you know, uh, how, what our life is like. We were also speaking earlier about how artists are pretty much used to being isolated and working yeah. in isolation. And I don't know that if collectors or people that aren't artists realize how much of our time is spent alone sort of contemplating what we're working on. So uh, for us, it, it's probably not been as big of a shock as it has been for like my daughter and my son-in-law who are used to being gone all day and having their kids in daycare and plus having jobs and now my daughter's teaching with zoom uh to her class and you know they're with their kids 24 7 and it's it's a quite a strain you know yeah. uh, i think for a lot of people and they're not knowing you know not knowing if you're going to have money to pay your mortgage or you know all those things yeah. it, it's affecting everybody yeah, that, I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is, as you mentioned, artists are used to um, working in isolation. So that's kind of, it's pretty typical for us. So there is an element of all of this that is a bit of business as usual. Um, obviously, you know, there's other aspects of it that are not. But um, I just thought that would be an interesting way for I don't know, people have a little bit more time on their hands. So I thought that we could get artists to uh, just share, just checking in. Just Well, that's why I, I think you came up with a great idea and I hope that uh, it will uh, do what you want it to do. Uh, I know you'll find other interesting people to talk to and uh, I hope it works out the way you had hoped it will. 
Well, thank you very much. And thank you very much for uh, checking in with me today. I appreciate it. Well, I hope we get to see each other soon in person and, uh, you know, in, in whatever way we can. Uh, I would enjoy that more, I think. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I will uh, take a road trip out to uh, Woodstock. All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you later, Mike. Bye.